and we pour it rather, and we're gonna start the action here tonight. So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Pennsylvania, July the 5th, 2008. I am Joe Dombrowski here from the Broadcast Division. Set for another wonderful afternoon of outdoor IWC action, the second annual Ellsworth Baseball Festival. Gentlemen, this is the opening contest of Ellsworth Baseball 2008. It's set for one ball and a 29 time limit. Introducing to you first, making his truck entrance to the ring. He hails from the A mobile entrance for the IWC stars here this evening in Ellsworth. It's not exactly the WrestleMania 3 ring card, but certainly a very unique, uh, fastidious occasion nonetheless, as CJ's sensation has been less than fastidious in these past several months. Ladies and gentlemen, CJ's sensation is claiming to be Miley Cyrus's boyfriend. That's going to do any success in this matchup. Sensation, the resident bully of the IWC locker room in recent months, has picked on the newest star to break out from our training school, the Coalition of Competition, and we'll see his entrance in just a moment. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, how about a big round of applause for his opponent in his second professional match? He weighs in at 226 pounds. Is Logan Shulow. Well, Logan Shulow taking the scenic route as he comes out from the other side. Does it need a big grandiose entrance? He's all about business, ladies and gentlemen, and the business at hand is CJ Sensation. We've seen Sensation the past several months get upset, get frustrated, and lose a few matchups. But then whenever IWC security came out to help him, he was always uh, very, very standoffish and physical towards them, even bullying Logan Shulo on a number of occasions when Logan was only trying to help. This matchup is underway, a beautiful afternoon here in Ellsworth, Pennsylvania, highlighted by IWC action. Of course, the traditional softball game between the IWC stars and fans and the Ellsworth Fire Department took place just a few mere moments ago, and now the action is going to kick up even further with the International Wrestling Cartel. I'm not exactly sure where Jay Ward and Farnsworth is here. My usual colleague was here earlier, but based on his uh, very inflammatory comments last year about the alleged uh, podunk mouth breathers, as he calls them here in Ellsworth, wouldn't surprise me if he'd skipped town already. But middle of the ring, Logan Shulo, collar and elbow tie up with the snapshot of CJ Sensation. Veteran of some 10 years is Sensation, taking on Logan Shulo, who's only having his second ever professional match. Certainly the experience is going to play a big factor in this matchup. Sensation won their first meeting last month at our summer sizzler event. But he got a run for his money. He got more than he bargained for. Sensation needed the illegal usage of the ropes in order to score that victory. And now Sensation grounds the power man Shulo with the head scissors. And now back up to the vertical base. CJ Sensation, former member of the War Machine, which is seemingly uh, disintegrated before our very eyes these past several months. Pace quick and little here. Logan Shulo, great agility for a man his size, went for a double leapfrog, but CJ was a step ahead this time, unlike their prior meeting, and a poke to the eyes, certainly an obvious cheap shot, as Sensation now begins to go to work. Ride now, duck of the clothesline, back elbow as well, and Sensation with a jumping sidekick connects right around the forehead of Logan Shulo. Cover, and that's almost a count of three. Sensation 
trying to continue to press the advantage here. Snapmare takeover, nicely done. And a sharp kick right between the shoulder blades by Sensation. The follow through drop kick. This could be enough here. CJ could go 2 0 on the youngster, but no, Logan Shulo gets the right shoulder up. So much action scheduled here tonight. Dennis Gregory will be on hand to defend the IWC Heavyweight Championship against Delirious, the second meeting between those parties. Shark Boy is here, of course, uh, the man from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. The man has turned over a new leaf in recent times. The Motor City Machine Guns, Chris Saban, Alex Shelley on hand as well. Ricky Ray has to go one-on-one -on -one with John McChesney, and of course, the first ever in IWC history, the historic dunk tank match. And Sensation drops the leg right across the neck to win now. And CJ now wrenching back with a chin lock. Buries the knee between the shoulder blades as well. Trying to weaken his foe. Shulo trying to get back up to his feet. Fights his way back now, slugfest. Shulo gets the better of it. Hard shot, down goes CJ Sensation. For the ride now, Sensation out of the corner, face plant, nicely done. Shulo gonna be all here, no, almost what you gotta consider an upset. Logan Shulo almost defeating the established veteran. Uh, wait a second, I think uh, we're gonna be no, joined here. Are you gonna tell me the show started? I'm sitting in a goddamn fire hall. A fan's blowing. No one's talking. There's no one. What, what, what you, kind you, of podunk operation are we running here, Dombrowski? You mean you didn't get the memo? Memo? There, there's barely electricity. Memo. Well, I'm sorry. I thought you left after your comments last year about this place. <laughs> I got tricked into coming here, and no one even tells me the show's on. For the love of Christ. I think you've offended just about everybody thus far. Logan Shulo offending CJ Sensation with a backbreaker. You're missing a great matchup here at Farnsworth. Logan Shulo's second ever professional match against the veteran CJ Sensation, hoping to avenge his loss from the last month. How's the kid doing? He's doing very well for himself. He's on top of the cover. Count of two, and that was almost it. Please, some composure, sir. Some decorum. Decorum. This place. You're asking me for decorum here? There's a, there's a hillbilly up there playing polka music. And you're asking me for decorum? There is not. Uh, where'd he go? Roll through. Oh, my God. He had a... Shulo got pinned. Sensation had his hand on the rope this time. Sensation wins. Here is your winner, CJ Sensation. Is that the hillbilly poker you were talking about? No, no, there was a some back to backwoods gentleman with a trailer and TVs and a and polka. You had to have seen the polka. Well, it's not exactly Miley Cyrus, but it is CJ Sensation's music for a night. He is victorious over Logan Shulo, second time using the rope. You guys just went out of there, come on, do you like that? All right, here we go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is set for one fall and a 20-minute time limit. And the following two contestants are making their IWC debut. about 
a breakout star making his IWC debut, who's amassed a reputation in several other top independent organizations. Actually, that rumor didn't give us enough credit because we're going to get two. On his way to the ring right now is Kristen Abel, a two-year pro based primarily out of the Michigan area. And he is a young gun who's made a relatively big name for himself in the Midwest. Some of you may not have heard of him before, but he hopes to uh, amass a reputation very quickly here this evening. I got no idea who the guy is. Oh, it's Kristen Abel. Okay, I know his name now, thank you. Tell me why I should know him. Who is he working for, Joe? We're for a variety of promotions in the Midwest. I don't think... Uh, uh, specifics are specifically important right now, but however, he's had a lot of major success in other regional promotions that have not paid us to plug them on the air. Because you don't do anything unless you see the money, right, Joe? I see. It's a business, man. Wait, when, did, not, I, business, when did I become the greedy one in this duo? Yeah, I, yeah. you've always been the greedy one in this duo, Joe. I'm rather up for it, Joe. Watch this. WWE. There, I just plugged them. Maybe better known in many circles, especially in the Midwest, as Josh Abercrombie, but recently decided to take his career more seriously to shed the image of the mustache-clad, pink-wearing comedy act and be a serious professional wrestler, now going by the name of Josh Raymond. When are you going to shed the comedy image, Jeff? Uh, well, not when you're here, quite obviously. Uh, apparently not. Jesus, you dress like you lost a bet. Well, it's, it's rather hot out here, if you haven't noticed. As Kristen Abel set to go one-on-one -on -one with Josh Raymond, the former Josh Abercrombie. Some of, uh, some of you fans may remember Josh Raymond uh, as part of the Short Lived Wrestling Society X show on MTV. Oh, you'll plug them. Well, how much uh, are they paying you? They, they don't exist anymore. I think I'm allowed to do that. <laughs> Colin Abo tie-up. Centering, it's Kristen Abel, and you see uh, dedication written on his tights. And that, that uh, pretty much summarizes the attitude of Kristen Abel perfectly. And that's what's brought him all the way from Michigan. Of course, uh, Josh Raymond, a Michigan native as well, comes from Kalamazoo, Michigan. And uh, great agility there, the reverse the wrist. Well, you saw uh, Kristen standing out yelling at these uh, fine inbred fans, yelling, born to be great, born to be great. So uh, apparently he... Uh, He's, he's trying to back that statement up. Well, great relation on the drop kick, follow through into a cover, almost to count of three, as Josh Raymond, hoping to impress, certainly Kristen Abel is as well, hoping to get uh, future exposure and appearances here in IWC. And I've had a chance to see uh, uh, several matches with the former Josh Abercrombie and some other promotions throughout Ohio, and he's always impressed, and it's great to see him now as a part of the IWC roster. If not tonight, then hopefully in the future as well. Uh, he's still got the uh, he's still got the uh, mini dreads and that uh, that leopard friend. He looks like that's new to me. Yeah, uh, if he wants to be taken seriously, he probably ought to shop somewhere other than the poison clearance. So. Josh Abercrombie was all about the pink and black, all about the flamboyance. But uh, Josh Raymond is a different story, different image, different state of mind, and a heck of a hurricane rana. Nicely done, and Kristen Abel is forced to back off. Sorry, but oh, now that's what I like to see. Take advantage of the uh, ref now look at a good shot to the throat. Was that to the throat? I believe it may have been. Referee Bobby Williams aside in this contest. That's Bobby Williams? I, I think you could tell now based on uh, that unique haircut. When did Bobby Williams get a mohawk? Uh, some point recently, apparently. Did he fall asleep in the wrong part of town? Well, at least you can decipher who he is now. The cover by Kirsten Abel, only a count of one that time. Yeah, and he ain't gonna talk to Jibba Jack. Did we have to give him milk to get him on the plane? Hard right, series of forearms by Josh Raymond, but Abel fights back into the corner, follow through standing drop kick. Raymond had nowhere to go there. Up and down with a suplex. Cover, two and nine. Christian Abel seems to have no problem being physical. He's been, he's been putting a good beating on a, a little rope head there. Well, first impressions are very important, Jay Worth, and these gentlemen know what it's all about. 
Check this out. Manhattan drop. Spinning back fist to the chest. Lack of days of cover, however, with the reputation Josh Raymond has by any name, you're not going to beat him like that. When you're born to be great, maybe you can. Well, that remains to be seen. Elevate Raymond. Hard with a side suplex. This could be all here, two and no. Kristen Abel hoping to spoil the debut of Josh Raymond. Abel, maybe signaling for the end here. Raymond counters and comes back with a knife edge chop. Second time, and you can hear that chop resonate even though we're outdoors. Springboard now by Raymond with a martial arts style kick. Almost shades another full ride that you see great low key as now he takes over on offense. Into the DDT. And Christian Abel apparently stunned. Oh! Well, if he wasn't, he is now. Cross kick to the jaw. Abel having a very tough time getting back to his feet. Gonna follow through clothesline. Shades of Kurt Henning with the overhead neck snap. Follow through clothesline. Right on top of Abel, that's almost a count of three. Couldn't really get the leg hooked on that one. Wasn't able to hold him down for the full three. Five minutes gone by in this contest, five minutes. Gonna go springboard here with a Cabrano, but Abel got the knees up. He's waiting too long. He's, he's trying to get the fans to love him, and that's what uh, the, that's the price he has to pay. Gave Christian enough time to get those knees up, get his composure back. Abel, down goes the elbow pad. He means business here, going in for the kill. Raymond counters. Check this out. Up and over and down. Almost a Northern Lights bomb. Really in one fell swoop. He's down on top, and that was almost it. Not, I, and again, not necessarily a lackadaisical cover, but didn't have the weight where he needed to. He probably could have held him down with a proper pin there. Right on the side of Josh Raymond. Is it going to be enough? This could be y'all, but Raymond may have sensed the end. Uh, momentum uh, sends him back into the corner. And the war continues. Raymond gets the boot up, however. Second turnbuckle on the inside. Check this out. This was called the Taliban backpack. Don't know what it's called now, but it was effective, and it got the win. Raymond came the victory in his IWC debut, Jay Worth. Yeah, an impressive move, an impressive win for the young kid. You know, might want to consider some new tights, but, you know, maybe a haircut. Get, you know, that way he looks like a man. Who made you the fashion police? Well, apparently when I'm the best dressed of the three talking here, I, apparently I take it the fact of. I think Norm's looking pretty tough today. Norm's looking a little sweaty today. Well, maybe that too. And Josh Raymond looking like a winner in his IWC debut. He's not coming alone. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is set for one and a 20-minute time limit. It is the first ring. He hails from Cleveland, Ohio, weighs in at 352 pounds, Jason Jason Bain had company with him a moment ago. I don't know what that consultation was about. Well, what are you talking about, Joe? I, I think there's something uh, something amok in that truck. But Jason Bain, what happened to the new, the new Cleveland Mafia along with J-Rock? We have Balls Hot Troy Lord sitting ringside here by our tech area. He was the first victim of Jason Bain's onslaught. Uh, well, actually, Ray Rowe would be the first victim, but Lords the first victim in a legal matchup. Lords was decimated by 68350, J Rock's new pirate heavy. Well, Lords, Lords taking exception, but uh, Bain did pick up the victory with the F5. He 
He's right, it was a bit excessive, Jeff. What? Decimation. <laughs> what a suck he's, up you are. He's sitting right. Do you even know what decimation just is? Just because he's an earshot, you suck up to him. I did. That is completely untrue. I would suck up to him even if he couldn't hear me. I highly doubt that. Well, Bain's set for action, and you can see the uh, the intensity on his face. His opponent is making his way around the ring right now. He is the suburban terrorist. Well, ladies and gentlemen, introducing his opponent. He weighs in at 206 pounds. Folks, he roams the streets at night while you sleep. He is the plumber, Michael Fassad, formerly one half of the IWC Tag Team Champions. It's a standing ovation from Troy Lords here at our tech area. Lords not scheduled for action tonight. Gotta believe he's still uh, recuperating from Jason Bain, but be that as it may, Bain is the hired assassin sent into IWC by the Big Daddy of Destruction, J-Rock, in order to eliminate Ray Rowe. Bain almost did that this past February by giving Ray Rowe a concussion and he'll have his chance to finish the job August 2nd at No Excuses 4. He's got a, oh, he's got a hell of a job in front of him. And check out what just crawled out of the truck. Delicious Jimmy DeMarco, Vendetta, the Hollywood Balls. They have issues with Facade that go back several months, stemming back from that hit where they almost broke Facade's neck. Facade got a measure of revenge last month with Shirley Doe and Super Hentai, but apparently the Balls part of the family, of course, are not going to let this die. And they just put him shoulder first into that, uh, into that ring post. And they just fed him to the proverbial lion. Jason Bain, 6'8", 350, with a weakened Michael Fassad. And you know, it's a, it's a hell of a task to go through when you're 100%. Oh, wait a second. Right into the F5. Jason Bain has got another victory. This could, be a, this could be a near record here. And you can tell that's not sitting well with Troy Lawrence. Time for the final 46 seconds. Your winner, Jason Bain. It's Bain and J-Rock against Ray Rowe and arguably Rowe's toughest opponent, the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, Samoa Submission Machine, Samoa Joe, August 2nd, No Excuses 4, available on DVD. And Troy Lawrence is heading to the ring. Well, Lords has a score to settle from last month when Bain got the better of him. And Lords, we know he's balls to the wall. He won't back down from anybody. But perhaps discretion would have been the better part of Balor. Oh, right here. He hit the old equalizer. Oh, but Lords, he's turning his back and Bain the monster. The dominance of Jason Bain from behind. The most dominant force I think I've ever seen here in IWC. And Lords gets an F5 too. He's not even scheduled to be on the card. He was just here for the softball game. Well, I think he was here to, to, to visit some friends, uh, participate in the softball game, scout some town, of course, and apparently send a message to Bain. But Bain's the one sending the message, and you gotta believe it's directed right straight at Ray Rowe, who is not here tonight. He just kicked the crap out of two guys in about a minute and a half. There's a, there, if you needed a hey, message, Jason. there it is. Hey, Jason! Before you take that truck ride back, you listen up. Four weeks from tonight, you're not going to be able to do what you did here jumping these boys. It's four weeks tonight, you bring J-Rock, Ray Rose bringing Samoa Joe. And Bane likes it. Four weeks from tonight, baby. Four times sports air. Your ass is going down. Jason Bain revels in the opportunity. It's Bain and J-Rock. New Cleveland Mafia versus Ray Rowe and the TNA World Heavyweight Champion, Samoa Joe. No excuses for. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is set for one pound and a 20 minute time limit. Introducing to you first, making his IWC return. sunshine in a bag, but he strikes me as Bubba the Bulldog, one of the most ornery but calculated veterans 
in IWC history. First time we've seen him since December, Farnsworth. Ornery? Yeah, because he's in fifth grade. He's the, he is the best athlete to have come out of Pittsburgh. He's, he's not ordinary, he's calculated. That's he's too. smart. He's strategic. Last time we saw him, he was paying respect to Shane Douglas. But I don't think Bubba will show any respect to his opponent here tonight. And Bubba, you never know when he's going to pop up, where he's going to pop up. But whenever he does, you know he's making some noise and he's giving somebody a hard time. Well, he should. He's the best athlete to ever come out of Pittsburgh. That is highly debatable. Shark Boy nearly bandaged and stitched from head to toe. He slipped into a momentary coma, but when he heard the glass shatter and came out of it, he had been reinvented. He thought he was somebody else. And now we are subjected to somebody with a temper and a demeanor that is quite simply stone cold. He is trash talking. He drinks clam juice. He's foul mouthed. He is Shark Boy, and he's not Shark the same Boy. innocent Finn man from the IWC past. You know something? It's been a year since I've been back in the armpit of America, Ellsworth, Pennsylvania. Why don't you all, why don't you people all get a job and move to a real city like Pittsburgh? I assume the only reason that people are here tonight is because this is the food stamp line. Is that what's going on today? And then, I'm going to take on my return to IWC. Shark Boy! You know, Shark Boy, I've got a lot to say to you. Crowd comes alive for professional wrestling's cult hero. I said, shut the hell up! Of course, these idiots. Here's what I gotta say to you, Shark Boy. And Shark Boy not gonna take any sacks. So bold with the greatest. I don't think you're going to hurt this about enough of your stupid yak. Yeah. You know, I've traveled all over the world. I've wrestled matches all over the place. I've been in the Midwest. I've been in the West Coast. The East Coast. Down South. Up in Canada. Over in Europe. And I ain't never seen a bigger piece of trash than you. Now, if you folks here in Pennsylvania would like to see me whip this bass, I want you to give me a shell yeah. Shell yeah! What? Shell yeah! One more time. Shell yeah! What do you think about that? Give me that. If you want to see me beat Shark Boy up, give me a smell yeah! Shut up! What? A dead silence. You can hear a pin drop. These disrespectful jerks in the crowd. Well, it doesn't sound like they're going to give you a smell, yeah, but don't worry, I'm going to give you one of these. And that's the fish in line, Farnsworth. Shark Boy, with a series of right hands, close line, Bubba tried to hang on, but went right out the other side. Tossed to the concrete by, uh... By old shark boy. And that is concrete. Concrete, asphalt, no protection, no mats. Very dangerous. On the outside of the year in Ellsworth baseball, we're not on the actual field like we were last year due to some rain, some wet conditions, but uh, we are still here right next to it. Uh, and Bubba the Bulldog is feeling the effects of it. Yeah, they decided to uh, roll out the red carpet for us and put us on actual firm ground. All the finned followers here in Ellsworth showing their support to Shark Boy. And what do you make of this attitude from Shark Boy Farnsworth? This is not the same uh, man slash fish that we saw last year in IWC, I believe, a couple of years ago. Hey, yeah, it doesn't matter what I think of how he's... It, if he wants to think he's someone else, by all means. But, you know, what matters is he's been getting the wins in the win column. And uh, 
And, and, you know, whatever it takes, if he wants to come out dressed as a ballerina or, you know, Bozo the Clown, or even worse, if he wants to dress like you, Joe, whatever puts a W in the car. Well, I'll tell you what, Shark Boy's always been one of the most popular athletes in IWC or beyond. Check out that clothesline by Sharky. But I'll tell you this, since undergoing this identity crisis, this changed persona, Shark Boy, even more popular than ever. Yeah, you uh, copy from the greats. I mean, if you're, you're not going to sit there and act like you're Joe Dombrowski and hope to get over. Right? Well, thank you very much for that. <laughs> and Bubba is on the outside of the ring once again. Looks like he's had enough of Shark Boy. He may be looking to take a powder here. He may be, uh, hey, it's, it's a good mile and a half to the dressing room. He may want to take two or three. Oh! And Shark Boy meets him in the grass. Leveled him with a hard right hand, or thin, as it were. Well, Shark Boy came here to win. He did not come here to take a count out. He came here to kick a little bass. <laughs> Get it? You're so original. Bass. Oh, no, he said it. Bubba goes face first, right into one of these wooden chairs. Which, let me tell you, they're uncomfortable to sit on. I can only imagine what it's like to be hit with you're the one. You're the only one up here not standing. What's up with that? Because I'm VIP, I get, a, I, I get a wooden chair. There was a fan in my dressing room. A fan. What kind of a fan? Like a... Like a... Oh, never mind. A uh, box fan. You know, we put it in the window. I thought you meant one of these Ellsworth fans. No. I thought you were getting social. Oh, yeah, because I want one of these smelly... Didn't aggressive. Eric Ecstasy bring a fan in there for you earlier? Well, he set it up for me. Oh, nice guy. I bet he did. What are you insinuating? Just call the damn match, Joe. Bubba Ram Shark Boy, arm first into the uh, the edge of that ring apron, and now begins to work on the left arm, the weaker limb of the veteran Shark Boy. Shark Boy been featured in so many uh, high-profile situations over his career, MTV's True Life, ABC's 2020, and so many other ventures. Even had a uh, rather messy legal dispute with Disney a couple years back. Uh, yeah. yeah. Cover two. Maybe that's how he afforded that, uh, that new leather vest. I don't know. Bubba got a two. -card. Maybe he got it directly from uh, a certain director who uh, had a character of the same name. He Bubba. just broke up with Rose McGowan. Not that I'm naming names. Bubba with a cross arm breaker. Couldn't get a submission, however. Can't picture Shark Boy quitting, especially with his current identity crisis. Shark trying to fight back with Bubba the Bulldog. Ever persistent, Bubba is the individual that retired Eric Angle from professional wrestling. He ran Shane Douglas, the franchise, out of IWC originally. Douglas made very, very few and sporadic appearances in the ring after that. Bubba's the man that called out Kurt Angle for a number of months, and we never, ever saw him fear. So Bubba the Bulldog certainly has a track record. Keep in mind Jimmy Vegas as well. I don't think you should be disparaging Kurt Angle. I mean, it's, there's no there's no shame in being afraid of stepping in the ring with Bubba the Bulldog. Well, I don't know if that's exactly what it was, but be that as it may. I don't think you should insinuate that he's a coward for not showing up. Bubba it's wrong. I, 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 Kurt Angle's a great American hero, a great, a great wrestler. He's just not at the level to step in the ring with Bubba. Not that great of a husband, but I'll leave uh, his personal matters to be uh, uh, discussed elsewhere. Shark Boy. Sometimes you just need to remind him that it's the Ike and Tina room and not the Tina and Ike. Okay? Well, I'm not going to touch that reference any further. As Bubba drops all of his weight, Probably some 230, 40 pounds right down in that arm of Shark Boy. Goes for the lateral press, doesn't look a leg, however, and Shark Boy is still alive. Again, back to that top wrist lock. Stretching out the elbow, stretching out the shoulder. Shark Boy looking for something here to get back into the game. tell you, it, within the past year, I've seen several wrestlers come from the Deep Blue Sea. I, uh, oh, nice jawbreaker. I, I, I'm not sure what's going on. Maybe this has something to do with global warming or pollution, but well, we're getting more and more sea-based wrestlers. Are we now? Yeah, we are. I saw a bunch of them at a, at a different uh, 
a different wrestling group's uh, uh, show. They were from New York. Okay. I'll take your word for it. And I'm just saying, if I was Bob, I probably would have brought some tartar sauce for the ride. For the ride, reversal by Bubba, but the Luthez press by Shark Boy. Follow through, the Shark salute, and drops the fist. Or fan. Well, that too. Shark Boy. Stomping the proverbial mud hole into Bubba the Bulldog. And he's walking it dry. Would it still be a mud hole if he came from 10,000 leagues below the sea? Well, that's a very good question. Bubba sent for the ride. Reversal here. Veteran counters, but Shark drives him down with a neck breaker. Staple of his offense for many, many years. Down for the cover. Leg is hooked and no. Got a good snap on that neck breaker, too. You saw Bubba's head go back and then forward. Indeed, we did. And the buckle, another reversal by the veteran. And there's the Bulldog by Bubba the Bulldog. This could be all. Does he have enough for the cover? He's on top, hook of the leg, and Bubba almost got to cover. Had he been right on top of him, that would have been three. You have to consider that a demoralizing win as far as this crowd goes. If Bubba would be able to pin Shark Boy in the center of the ring. Oh, oh wow, wow, wow. The crowd's offended. Oh, no. Well, I knew, I knew you wouldn't. Uh, They'll probably all go it. home and cry while watching Hee Haw tonight. Bubba going for the bulldog drop. Shark Boy counters. Look out. Kick. Wham. Stunner. Or the, the chummer, excuse me. And that's going to be all. And Shark Boy gets the win with the chummer. You heard me. The winner by Pitbull, Shark Boy. Shark Boy gets the victory over Bubba the Bulldog here. An animalistic battle, to say the least. But Sharky is the victor, Farnsworth. Yeah, good for him. Cheated. Shark Boy came to Ellsworth. He got a shell, yeah. He got a victory. And that is indeed, Farnsworth, the fish in line because Shark Boy said so. Hey, that's the. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is set for one call and a 20 minute time limit. Introducing to you first, making his way around the ring area, he weighs in at 175 pounds. He is gone! Pennsylvania Base Brawl 2008. I am Joe Dombrowski, joined with the morally deficient Jay Worthington Farnsworth, set for major high stakes and serious business, sir. Winner of this matchup gets a super ready title opportunity August 2nd, no excuses for, and this man was robbed out of his opportunity to even be in Super Indy 7 this year to begin with, thanks to a hit and a savage attack from the family. Wow, wow, wow. Good friend of mine, but you know what I was robbed out of? My Saturday afternoon being tricked into coming here. You know, I, just as a point of reference, we need to book places that actually exist on GPS. I'm sorry you're so offended by this, but everybody else is having a great time. Why can't you? Oh, because, well, because I have the intelligence to know when I'm sitting in a parking lot. Stop it. This is a beautiful scenic view here. Trees, blue skies, great baseball field. Why do you gotta be a Grinch all the damn time? And ladies and gentlemen, Super Hentai is our point, and it's from Rock Mama Beach, California. He's in at 216 pounds. He's the sweet and sour one, Lizzy Sweetie. Still recognizes himself as uh, the ICW, ICWA Texarkana Television Championship, a belt he created some years ago and has defended literally all across the continent. However, the big prize at stake, the prize Sweeney doesn't have anymore, is that IWC Super Indy Championship. He was the last champion on record before Jerry Lynn won Super Indy 7. Credit to Jerry Lynn, Lynn refused to accept the championship until he beat the prior champion, Sweeney, in the ring cleanly, one, two, three. But with that loss, now behind Sweeney, 
the sweet and sour one hopes to get back into top contention for the Super Indy belt. Uh, with that loss, we need to concentrate on defending the ICW, ICWA, that's our can of TV title. Don't you think he'd rather be defending the Super Indy title? Well, maybe an IWC, but it's still a very prestigious title recognized around the world. Well, you want to talk about prestige, Super Indy title's prestige is thanks in large part to Sweeney's adversary here tonight. Super Anti won the inaugural Super Indy tournament in 2002, defended that belt across the world Ladies for 11 months of change. The winner of this contest will receive a Super Indy title match against Cherry Lynn at IWC's No Excuses. Anti actually defeated Jerry Lynn in a Super Indy title defense back in April of 2002. So Hentai has proven he can beat Jerry Lynn. So if Hentai can get through Larry Sweeney, he may have a psychological edge when it comes into a potential title matchup at No Excuses 4. Both against Lynn and with himself, he knows he can do it. It's not a, it's not a question of him needing to push himself up to that level to see if he can hit that level. He knows he can do it. Thank you very much. Yes. Sweeney happy to be here. But we gotta get down to business, Farnsworth. You know how dejected. I know you talk to Hentai on occasion. I, I don't think really he has much of a choice when it comes to talking to you, but I think he humors you. But be that as it may, you talk to Hentai on a regular basis, and I know he was just so gutted and so heartbroken over having to miss Super Indy 7 based on being attacked in his own training school by the Gambinos and Company. Well, first off, the one thing he keeps telling me is that you smell. Oh. Secondly, yeah, he was destroyed by it. He, mentally, he was viewing this as, the, uh, he was looking at sort of like a long road picture. He wanted to get into that tournament. He wanted to have a good long run as the champ. And that all got destroyed by the family. Farnsworth, I think before we get sour, we're going to get a little sweet. The fans want a dance-off. I don't know if it's a Tracy Smothers dance-off to the death, but it seems like Hentai and Sweeney are both willing. I don't know that that's fair. I mean, Sweeney has a distinct advantage of this. That's true. We've seen Sweeney strut his stuff for a number of years. Hentai has gotten by on toughness and intensity, not on moves on the dance floor. And Hentai is complaining about the choice of the Blue World Order entrance music for the dance-off. Is that what that was? That's what it was. Wow, you're a Mark Joe. <laughs> wow. 70s, 70s, anything with that ticket. Chuck is uh, Sweeney's requesting something from the 70s from Chuck Roberts. Maybe they can dance to a Carpenter song. What do you think, Farnsworth? Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see them uh, bust one out the Superstar. Let's see what this is. It's no Holiday Road, certainly. Only in Ellsworth can we be having this kind of time. Oh, yeah. Any minute now, the sun will kick in. A flock of seagulls? Well, what, what's Hentai going to do with this? Sweeney's feeling it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the International Wrestling Cartel. And this is Sweet and Sour Larry Sweeney. And Hentai seems a little taken aback here. I don't know if he can compete with this. What's Hentai got? I was thinking about it. Having trouble getting in rhythm a little bit here. A little two-step. I'll check that out. <laughs> what the hell? I don't think Sweeney knows 
to believe. I think Sweeney might have just got out Sweeney. Sweeney is shocked and appalled. It was a double cross. He's a victim of circumstance. Head tie, shaking his money maker. Where it looks like he's done this before. Oh, if you're going, he's probably seen some tape of Sweeney. He's probably practicing. Well, how's Sweeney gonna top this? Look at that! Oh, robot. Who would have known that Super Hentai was so funky? He's up there with Funky Joey D. I think he's surpassed. Why is our why is the ringside cameraman smiling so widely? Oh, Sweeney's down! Sweeney's down! Hentai wins! Hentai wins! Good God! Oh my God! My God! The passing of the torch! What the hell did we just see? Well, we just saw the dance. Oh, well played by Sweeney. A finger right to the eyes. He's got him winded well, from the dance-off. He's got him blind. Take advantage! Stealing a page from the master of the dance-offs. You take your shots, you take your opportunities. Keep in mind, Hentai may have been having fun out there, but Sweeney never lost track of what this is about. This is about a shot at the Super Indy title. What can I say, man? He's a tweener. And Hentai's left fighting for his life here. He's getting the air choked out of him. Yeah, it's, it's all fun and games till that bell rings. Then it's a thumb in the eye, apparently. And then it's championship stakes. Because the winner has to go through Jerry Lynn. And even though Jerry Lynn is one of the competitors that has faced Sweeney in a dance-off slash strut-off in recent times, you know when it comes down to it, Lynn never loses focus in the ring. Very true, very true. He is an incredibly focused octogenarian. Stop it. I thought we'd get one show without a joke about Jerry Lynn's age. How old are you, pal? You don't look like a spring chicken yourself. I, I am one-third of the age of Jerry how, Lynn. How many 30th birthdays have you had, anyway? Uh, I'm getting ready to have my third. Uh, makes sense. I'm sorry, just because some of us aren't still wearing our training diapers, or, or our old people diapers, Please. depending upon which, uh, between you and Len, good lord. I wonder how long it'll take before that dance-off gets on YouTube. You're what, 14? Stop it. Sweeney, shoulder first into the ring post. And head tie, all the machinations aside, down to business here. And as silly as it may seem, I think that dance-off certainly threw Sweeney off his game a little. He was expecting to show up, hentai, get the crowd on his side, but that's the opposite happened. Sweeney found himself on the defensive. Well, but in, to Sweeney's credit, pretty quick about it, he realized he wasn't winning it. He wasn't winning him over with the uh, dance-off. So he, he went to plan B, thumb to the eye. Which is even worse to a, to a guy wearing a mask because it's a lot harder to try and, you know... You don't get to rub your eye as well. You don't get to try and fix the damage that has been done, so to speak. And keep in mind, this action is currently on the outside of the ring, and that's very dangerous. Concrete, asphalt, nothing there that feels good, and Sweeney's in control now, and Sweeney's very aggressive. I think he, he's offended that he got shown up. I think he's upset that he lost a Super Indy title, and we're seeing a little bit more of the old Sweet and Sour here tonight. A little more sour. Very true, and we have a near fall. It was Super Hentai a couple of months ago, training some of his students in the Coalition of Competition when the Gambinos, the Hollywood Balds, the Flunkies, all ran in the front door, assaulted Hentai, powerbombed him in the bed of a truck, and almost, almost cracked a cinder block over hentai. 
But they chose not to. To their credit, it was a mess. Oh, to their credit. They, they, like, that they, makes it better. They, would it have been better had they smashed his head in? Of course had not. Had they broke a leg? They, they, they warned him. They showed him what they could have done. And what did Hentai do? He came back with a baseball bat and a couple of friends and got some revenge. If anything, the Gambinos made, made a mistake in that they didn't kill him. Because, honestly, you, you don't want to leave Hentai able to come back to teach you a lesson. Well... Hentai will break his back for what he believes in, both literally and figuratively. You're not going to keep Hentai down for long. Crossbody almost keeps Sweeney down for three. The former Super Indy champion right back up. Former two-time Super Indy champion, I should say. And to be fair, Hentai will not only break his, break his back, he'll break your back to teach, uh, to teach the last And enjoy game. it. Yeah. We've seen the ferocity out of Hentai time and time again. Whether it was hentai, whether it was super hentai, no matter what his state of mind was or what his allegiance was, his ring style always stayed the same. But you gotta wonder, Farnsworth, this is a very humid day out here, obviously. We're outdoors, and uh, I think that mask of hentai is gonna have to come into play the longer this match goes. It restricts your breathing, it restricts uh, the heat you can give off, it holds sweat in. It gets wet, it starts dripping down into your eyes because it sort of like holds it and pulls it like a reserve. Big action. Sweeney feeling good, but he's still a ways away from a pinfall. Tape's coming off. Oh, you're not going to be hentai with a hook in the leg. As much as I respect and admire Sweeney for what he's accomplished, that was a mistake by Mr. Larry Sweeney. Oh, that might have been a ploy just to get a, get a little further into hentai's head. Show him up. I don't think enough of you to actually hook the leg. Check this out. Double underhook. Overhead with the suplex. Nicely done, but again, does not hook a leg. Barely had any body on body. I can't, I can't picture a time ever when someone's beaten super anti like that. Swinney up top. Measures him with the axe handle again. Right between the eyes. Cover here, two and no. Well, to Sweeney's credit, he is landing five his axe handle. Shut up, Chuck. Every match, jeez. He's landing these axe handles right between the eyes. There, there's no reason to expect that you need to hold the legs. To hook the legs. Check this out. Gut wrench suplex. Nicely done. Got that cover again. Swinney has nobody to blame but himself here. They might be underestimating him, Ty, a little bit. And that, that's a fatal mistake. Shot at Jerry Lynn on the line here. Super Randy title. Swinney could be a three-time champion. And time with a roll up from behind, though, and he almost beat him. Swinney took his eye off the ball for a second, and Hentai, the veteran, almost able to win that matchup. Might have bounced his head off the ring. You see he's holding his, uh, the back of his head, and he's uh, he clearly hurt by that close one. The external occipital protuberance landed right first. What kind of hillbilly speak are you using, Joe? He got hit in the back of the head. Because you don't understand it, doesn't mean you have to make fun of it. I never understand you, Joe. It's like you're speaking Esperanto, or some language twins teach each other. <laughs> And Sweeney. really, if I don't understand you, what makes you think all of these third grade dropouts are going to understand you? Second turn block on the inside, went to the wall once too often with the double axe handle. Hentai had it scouted and measured him, jumping into Gurry kick by Hentai. Nicely done, but both men are down. The heat is setting in, fatigue is setting in. Hentai needs to get back to his feet. He's been taking a beating for the past five minutes or so. He needs a chance to regroup, and that's exactly what he's going to take advantage of as much of this 10 count as he can. The combo, and Hentai had that burst of adrenaline, but that may be all he had left. Now Sweeney hooks the leg, presses the body, but Hentai still kicks out. Why don't you tell him, that, tell him you knocked the power out, Jeff? Just I did not. Up. Stop it. A great crew, Tony Fiore, Digital Horizons. Keeping track of things here. Nice board buster by Sweeney. Cover, two and no. And Sweeney hooking the leg now. He's feeling the pressure. I think he's learned from his mistake of earlier tonight. I think Sweeney would be perfectly happy to end this matchup right now and move on to Jerry Lynn at no excuses. Irish whip. 
McIntyre hits hard in the buckle. Elbow right to the mouth of Sweeney. Cross body from the top. Hit tie. Got the way he's going to no excuses. Took Sweeney right out, and uh, as a result, Hentai gets the opportunity that was robbed from him. Thanks to the fans. He gets an opportunity at reclaiming that Super Indy belt for a second time. It'll go down August 2nd. No excuse for can Hentai defeat Jerry Lynn in their first match against each other in over six years? For well, we know Hentai can defeat Jerry Lynn. It will Hentai defeat Jerry Lynn. So you gotta figure he's got good momentum here, two for two for the day. Super anti Jerry Lynn on this second Super Indy title, the man who currently holds it against the man that made it famous. perfect Bruce Maxwell. They are the best around, made a big name for themselves in the Philadelphia, New Jersey area, wrestling for a variety of the top promotions there. And they made their way to IWC, had a stellar showing with the Hollywood Balls, but tonight they're facing what many say are the most popular and most cohesive tag team in professional wrestling today. It will be very interesting to see how they fare tonight. past April at Super Indy. Probably the, the, really the team that's redefining uh, the, the tag team ranks in indie wrestling right now. And, they, and they're facing, uh, to be announced, the Masquerade. The best guess, that's what TBA stands for. I didn't know. What? Weren't you here last month for their match? Yeah, but I, you know, I, the, the, the call sheet in the quote locker room, I quote, just said TBA. Well, be that as it may, TJ Cannon in the ring right now, the Immaculate One, 
with former IWC Super Indy champion Chris Saban, a man who went undefeated in IWC for two years at one point, and TJ Cannon now, trying to get the best of Saban, but Saban out-quickening him with a couple of quick arm drags. Saw the Motor City Machine Guns on Spike TV get a uh, big tag team victory over Beer Money this past Thursday night on Spike. Yeah, very true, very true, although it cost him. Very true as well. Double hip lock as the machine guns hope to continue that momentum. Nice drop kick, great combo by the machine guns. That's what you're going to see anytime you see Saban and Shella together. Seamless, rapid fire, tag team combination offense. And you'd have to look back to the glory years of tag team wrestling to find a team that worked better together. It, it, their, their offense is just non stop, they just completely overwhelm their opponents. With a flurry of offense. They don't give them a chance to think. They don't give them a chance to form a battle plan. Best around actually stepbrothers from Canada. Moved to the United States when they were seven. TJ training in Harrisburg. Bruce training in California under Jesse Hernandez. TJ, TJ uh, Cannon once spent uh, an entire half of a year living out of his car, traveling all over the United States and Canada appearing on various wrestling shows. Just lived out of his car, traveling around, living his dream. Well, you gotta pay your dues, and I give the kid credit for doing it. I mean, he looks pretty young. And, and TJ Cannon uh, spent time in the emergency room after his IWC debut, went for an acai moonsault, cracked his shin on the guardrail, uh, couldn't even leave under his own power, but give him credit, uh, they were back in the ring just a couple of weeks later. Very true. They finished the match. They did finish the match. TJ Cannon has gotten a lot of uh, a lot of hype over the uh, past several months for a shooting star double stop. He uses one of his signature maneuvers. And check out that maneuver. Great double team. That's called the bonsai, and that could be all. Cover will only count of one. Chris Saban, quick to intervene. Yeah, I don't think he really needed to intervene, but what the heck? You may as well kick a guy when you get a chance, right, Joe? Well, that's certainly your M.O. Double leapfrog by the best around. Drop down, springboard into the back elbow. Very nicely done. Cover to end. The uh, best around fans of this, of this fast-paced offense as well. Well, they can go quick too, certainly. And if, you, if, you're, if you're a young tag team in this business right now, and you have a fast-paced, cruiserweight-style, X-Division-style offense, you're going to look at the machine guns as the measuring stick. True, very true. They are the, like I said, they are redefining it. DJ Cannon feigns the kick, goes right into the chin lock on Alex Shelley, former Super Indy Tournament runner-up is Shelley. A mat master in so many different styles, whether it's American, European, Japanese. Tag made. Springs in with the elbow, does picture perfect Bruce Maxwell, and again, only a count of one, as Shelley is quick to kick out. Best Around recently featured in Pro Wrestling Illustrated magazine in one of their new features called Ones to Watch, profiled very favorably for their success in uh, many top organizations throughout Philadelphia and New Jersey. Very true. I was in that same, uh, that same column about uh, a few year ago. That column existed a year ago. Shelly with a sleeper hold. She rolled by Maxwell on a double jawbreaker. Cannon got Shelly, but he got his own partner in the process, unbeknownst to him. Oh, best round collide, and Saban gets the tag. Duck underneath here, and Saban ready to explode. Looked like he was, he was hooking for a hip toss, but Saban countered and popped him. Back kick, charger with the drop kick. Saban gets the full head of steam, and that's when the machine guns operate best. Saban, knife edge chop, he'll be done. Head of steam, check this out, running through with the back elbow. And now the machine gun, like a well-oiled machine, start to go to work on TJ Cannon. Springboard forearm. Shelly looking for a double team. Drop kick into the modified shell shot, cover, but Maxwell leaps into the ring and interrupts the fall. Yeah, Maxwell knew that could have been three right there. A good save by, by Maxwell. 
And the Maxwell charging on Saban. It's best around two to one in the ring right now on Saban. Shelly on the outside. Check this around out. Going to spring off of the clothesline. Use Maxwell as a springboard. Cannon comes in. Nice snap mare. And we got some double team offense here. Machine gun like offense. From the best around. And they just dropped him in the jawbreaker. That could be it. Two and almost a count of three. Shelly nowhere to be seen for the save on that one. Well, Shelly's in trouble. I don't know if he got the wind knocked out of him or what. But he's had trouble getting back into the ring. And now, maybe just baiting in Maxwell, just draped him first on that top rope. TJ Cannon doesn't realize Alex Shelly's there. Hard chop right to the glutes. <laughs> right between the glutes, even. Shelly sees his opening, drops him down with a neck breaker, stretched out uh, Maxwell's body. Cannon from behind. Alex Shelly trying to break the grasp. Standing side switch, nicely done, but Cannon right back with one of his own. And Saban able to bail out his partner. Watch the hesitation drop kick in the corner. Great hang time by Chris Saban. Cradle shot coming up. Five minutes gone by, five minutes. No encounter. I believe that's TJ Cannon dropped with another double team. And Shelly Saban gonna finish him off. Oh, what a kick. What a thrust kick. Straight to the jaw. And the machine guns bring it home. Might have broke his nose with that kick. Wow. Set of kicks. The winners of this contest, the team of Alex Shelly. Chris Saban, the Motor City of Machine Alex Shelley, Chris Saban get the victory. But when it comes down to it, the best around tried to out machine gun the machine guns, and for a while they did a darn good job. Yeah, but it only it doesn't matter how well you do, it's the last three seconds to count. Canada Maxwell, another great performance here in IWC. Gotta think we'll be seeing more of them in the months to come. But the winners here tonight. Alex Shelley, Chris Saban, Motor City Machine Guns, perhaps back in the tag team hunt sometime soon. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest is set for one fall at a 20 minute time limit. Introducing first, making his way towards the ring, he hails from Erie, Pennsylvania. He weighs in at 216 pounds. Fabulous John McChesney did not fare too well last time he went one on one with the Rottweiler, the man of fifth bull, Ricky Reyes. McChesney spent months politicking to try to get his way into the Super Indy 7 tournament despite being eliminated in his only qualifying matchup. After confrontation with Awesome Kong and several call outs for Motor Norm Connors. IWC finally gave McChesney that quarterfinal round match. With only a moment's notice, John McChesney, look out, incoming. John McChesney got a match with Ricky Reyes, but didn't know about it until after the opening bell had already rung. Six seconds later, Reyes had choked out McChesney. Hopefully he'll fare a little better against Reyes this time. Lord knows, a man like McChesney doesn't want to drive out here to Podunk, Arkansas to lose in six seconds. Would you please be nice to these people? I don't want to have to scold you again. Making his way around the ring. He weighs in at 216 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, he's a Havana Well, I, I appreciate our fans supporting IWC, keeping us in business. These people are not the people keeping us in business. Well, I'm a Pete. Look at these people. They make the Elizabeth crowd look like look like friggin' Mensa members. Well, what, what, about, what about John McChesney, though? What's, what's going through his mind? Last time he was in the ring with Ricky Reyes, he got beaten six seconds. That's an IWC record. 
Oh, well, the one thing that's got to be going through through his mind is do not get caught in that dragon sleep. Avoid it at all costs. He knows just how, how much it hurts, how much it takes out of you, how quick it can tap you out. He has, he has to be thinking, stay out of that predicament. Bell sounds, we are underway with action. Reyes and McChesney one-on-one. -on -one. Keep in mind, Reyes screwed out of the IWC title in subsequent rematches thanks to Dennis Gregory, the current champion, and his war machine uh, confidants. John McChesney has been the main Dennis Gregory uh, partner in crime over these past uh, several months, but it seems like there's some dissension about function in the junction between both sides. McChesney seems to be getting kind of sick and tired that Gregory doesn't give McChesney any credit, and Gregory claims he retains his title, quote, all by himself. Well, he does. He's the only one in the match. It's not a tag match. It's not a three-way. It's not a tornado. He retains it solo. Hard, hard, Colin Obataya. Gray is trying to muscle McChesney back into the corner. Well, you can tell Reyes clearly has the strength advantage of the two. Oh. This is the kind of match Reyes has been wanting for over a year, ever since being screwed back at Super 86. He's wanted all these members of the War Machine, past or present, in the ring, as many times as he can get them. Because that can be traced back to the sole reason why he is not IWC champion is Dennis Gregory and his shenanigans. And Reyes held that title with such pride, such respect, professionalism, carried it to new heights, uh, defeated so many athletes in championship matchups and then to have it snatched from his grasp was certainly a major, major shot to Ricky Reyes. Well, absolutely. That match in which he lost the title, he, he never saw the uh, betrayal of Brent Albright coming. Not that they were in league with each other, but he didn't, he didn't see the collusion between Albright and Dennis Gregory. And that has stuck in his craw ever since it happened. If you talk to him now, and he'll, he'll talk about how angry he is about that. It almost fuels him. Arm dragged by Reyes. And in control of the arm, the four-time Super Indy champion, dead set on getting back into Super Indy title contention. But is that going to be possible? Well, he would he love the opportunity. And a win here would definitely take a step toward that, wouldn't it? No doubt it would. And Wouldn't it, Joe? Answer me when it, I, I ask you I already told you there's no doubt that it would. Will you stop getting uppity with me? Well, pay attention. You don't need to be staring around at the at the ladies laying out in front of us. They're yeah, here really. for me, okay? So I somehow doubt that. Arm dragged by Ricky Reyes on John McChesney. Been such a surly individual these past several months. Complaining about so much, coming over to the broadcast position, complaining about Jake the Snake Roberts, Ricky Reyes, the Sandman, anything he can complain about will usually come out of his mouth. He's an angry man. He, he, I, and to be fair, he has been screwed over by Norm time and time again. I think he's been screwed over by Dennis Gregory, personally. Oh, possibly. I mean, that's a very debatable point. But that still, that, that just because it's Denny, if it is Denny that's screwing him, that doesn't mean that he's going to be fine with it, does it? Not at all. Dennis Gregory puts John McChesney in all these rough situations, has the matches heavy all the time, but I'll tell you what, every single time McChesney bails Gregory out, Gregory acts like he did it all by himself. And if you were Gregory's lackey, would you start taking offense to being ignored all the time? Well, there's your first mistake. I wouldn't be Gre Gregory's lackey. Wait a second. Now, I don't know if we have it on camera, but Dennis Gregory has come out here to the ring area. He's currently having a, a heated debate with ringing out to Chuck Roberts. And now a discussion with uh, our truck driver over there. But back in the ring, it's John McChesney in firm control of Ricky Reyes, knee across the throat and the cover. Almost a count of three McChesney. Certainly doing much better than he did back at Super Indy 7. He's helping. How do you like this for us? We have IWC wrestling action with a soundtrack. Into the cover again, two and no. Frankly, I don't like it because if there's gonna be a if there's gonna be a soundtrack to IWC, it should be me, goddammit. <laughs> Please. 
Well, that would be a way to drive away all these Ellsworth people. That's really what you want, isn't it? I'm fine with all of them. They can all go back to their trailer parks for all I care. Yeah, well, I've had about enough of your disrespect, but be that as it may. McChesney. You can go back to your trailer park, too, for all I care. All right, elbowing, el elbowing Reyes, had him trapped in a, a body scissors. And look out here, Reyes over the sunset flip. Down cover to Edna. And McChesney with a drop kick. Over again, two and no. Fabulous! 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 And Fab apparently has some fans here in, uh, in, 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 in Ells, Ellsworth. Ellsworth? I believe the fans were chanting Fab, you suck. No, that was Fab, you lost, wasn't it? Well, Tomato Tomato is the champion. I can barely record. understand what any of these people say, what with all the missing teeth anyway. Inching his way closer to the ring here, holding his belt for all to see, as McChesney and Reyes battling on the outside concrete. And McChesney looking to make a big time statement here, but is this John McChesney making a statement, or is it McChesney making a statement on behalf of Dennis Gregory? I have to figure, in, in McChesney's mind, it's his statement. He is saying what he feels he needs to say. I think Gregory is probably just trying to uh, trying to tighten the rein a little bit, if you know what I mean. Well, Gregory seems more focused with these fans at ringside than he is with anything going on in the ring right now. Did he just come out here early to gloat? Maybe he wanted to, uh, maybe he knows Reyes is inching his way back toward title contention. Maybe he's doing a little scouting. Reyes with a kick. Sweet neck breaker by the Havana Fifth Bowl as Reyes attempts to make a comeback. We finally got a cool breeze going through. Get the guys some air. Because Lord knows we, we had to do this out in the parking lot. Both men up to their feet. Luck of a couple right shot by Reyes. Reyes sends Chesney for the line. Spinning heel kick right around the facial features. This could be all here. Cover two and no. Ten minutes gone by in this contest, ten minutes. If it, you gotta wonder just what exactly, uh, what exactly Kachesky's game plan is. Then I figured he'd probably try and get in his head a little bit, but he hasn't been doing that. Reyes has speed, Reyes has, has the strength. But the, the only clear-cut advantage that McChesney has is a bigger reach and slightly taller. Thrust kick, Reyes caught him. Check this out, back suplex, great balance by McChesney. Lands on his feet, super kick, top of the head, and a cover, and that's two, and that's almost all. Yeah, I mean, we know McChesney's double top. We've seen the beating he can take. And he's smart, he's staying on top of Reyes, not giving him a chance to regroup. John McChesney, he go for the kill here. It's put away so many athletes. Triple A race behind him. Dragon Sleeper, Dragon Sleeper. Can he get the body scissors? No, McChesney knees his way free, but right in to a German suplex. Bridge, cover, Reyes two and a half. Uh, I'm impressed. I didn't think he was kicking out of that. And Dennis Gregory still at ringside. Him and Chuck Roberts, another heated debate here over by our tech area. What does Gregory have to do? What is his beef with this match with Chuck Roberts? Come on. I, I couldn't hear what he was yelling, but he's really hot about it. He is not happy. And Reyes going to charge in. McChesney sidestep two ropes up with the legs. Will this be all? McChesney going to take a chance here. Going to put him away with a missile drop kick. Reyes is down. The fabulous one has the cover. Two, almost a count of three. Gregory is just laughing. 
McChesney maybe going for one more. And Gregory again being a detriment, a distraction out here. McChesney's up top. Gregory going with his fans. Reyes getting to his feet. And Reyes able to cut McChesney off. And the Havana Pitbull begins to unload, and you gotta wonder if Reyes has noticed Gregory. That's gotta be a psychological disadvantage. Absolutely. But oh, Reyes may, may also at the same time know the tension between the two. <laughs> so he takes Reyes down. Chesney, <laughs> frog splash, nobody home. And Reyes with the Enziguri kick. McChesney saw that Reyes got out of the way and he was able to roll through and out of it, but wasn't quick enough to get back. Wasn't quick enough to formulate an offense and took the Enziguri. I believe Reyes signaling to the Dragon Sleeper a moment ago. Will he be able to apply it? Wait, check this out. Reyes right into Bobby Williams, and Williams is down. Super kick to Reyes. Chesney has some great momentum. And Gregory getting in the ring. Oh, check this. What, what the hell? With no referee. Gregory. Oh, looks like he wants to do something himself. Reyes has been perhaps the most consistent title contender over the past year. And Gregory wants to send a message. And McChesney. I don't know if he knows what to make of this. McChesney looks dumbfounded. Gregory wants McChesney to hold Reyes. Gregory. And he's holding up the He's holding him up the dead leg. Oh, wait a second. Reyes moved. Gregory with a knockout shot on the last remaining member of the war machine. And if McChesney was disgruntled with Gregory before, what's he going to feel like when he wakes up? didn't so much move as just slump and fall. And McChesney is out. And, and I don't think that, uh, I don't think Gregory cares. Well, Reyes certainly cares. And, but you're right, Gregory's showing no remorse to a supposed ally that he just KO'd. He's pinned. Reyes on top, and Reyes got the win. And that was like a five or six. Now Gregory's upset. But we're on this contest. We're again. We're here. I don't think Gregory's upset that he hit McChesney. I think he's upset that Ray has won. Probably. Gregory pacing around here. Very upset, but the damage has been done. Reyes, maybe a step closer to a rematch here, thanks to Dennis Gregory's involvement. Dennis Gregory with Delirious in pursuit on foot. Lord, is he a weird son of a gun. Well, Delirious on the warpath after Jenny Gregory. And it looks like this match is going to start UCROM 2. Delirious still upset over uh, the actions towards Daisy Hayes. Dennis Gregory so chauvinistic, so inappropriate towards, uh, towards Daisy Hayes over the past several months. Wanted, wanted a sandwich made, wanted him to go into the kitchen. Can you believe these antiquated remarks from Denny Gregory? Well, had she made the sandwich, it wouldn't have been a problem, so. Stop it. Oh, way, way, way. Poor Daisy Hay. She comes into a man's ring and expects, and then when she's treated like everyone else is treated, all of a sudden it's poor form. Well, I'll tell you what, delirious fighting for the honor of, De of uh, Daisy Hayes against Dennis Gregory. Um, Dennis Gregory, uh, eked 
spot, a championship title defense Hello, against Alex oh, Gunnachuk. No, it's not supposed to be a following contest. Fuck, 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 Listen, you fuck, 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 This is my promo time. It is a time to have a match. It's a chance going to the ring. But if you want to wrestle now, I can do that now. But let me say this to you. I beat you once. I for sure can beat you twice. So, Bohica Freak, which stands for Bend Over. Here it comes again. This tasteful remarks we apologize for. Well, Joe apologizes for. Everybody but you apologizes for. Uh, I don't know any of these people in apology. I'd let you talk if I could understand you. Hi, Norm. I need a ride. Two jackasses will chant anything. Thank you. I love you, Norm. Oh, heck, we have a match. Delirious all over Dennis Gregory to start this matchup. Series of clotheslines. Gregory swings to the outside. He wants no part of the man from the edge of sanity. Delirious is fired up, and he wants to talk. You must love me when you put your shoes on these sticks, these sticks. But tonight, delirious, he going all the way up, and we outside with the best ball, from Dilly Ball. What da 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 da? But whatever says, so Dennis Gregory, today, delirious, the new WC champion. Intimidated Gregory, the oh, war veteran, can't 
can't call him a hero based on his recent conduct, but a war veteran of a number of tours overseas. He gave, and he saluted and then saluted again. Yeah. And uh, no matter what language you speak, English or lizard, you understand that message. That's the old Ellsworth, Ellsworth greeting right that there. That is not. Get out of here. Really? Here's traps both arms to Dennis Gregory. A couple hard forearms. And a knee. Right hand. Denny just laying into him. The delirious fires back with a chop. Delirious. Personal integrity at stake here. He's all, he's all about comedy a lot of times. He's all about the mind games and the imagination. But it's very clear that Delirious is very close to Daisy Hayes. And anytime Dennis Gregory hit on her, uh, said any chauvinist remarks, a woman shouldn't be around, et cetera, et cetera, it clearly got way under the skin of Delirious. And you can see he's not stopping in the corner, ignoring referee culture at this point. Well, that's how you count. That, that was a 10 count and hit at the edge of sanity, I guess. Delirious takes Gregory out of the corner. And just pounding away at him. We're not seeing the, uh, the sweet science of Delirious as a professional wrestler. We're seeing more of a brawl, which is really more of a Dennis Gregory style match when you think of it. So this may be Delirious playing right into Denny Gregory's playbook, as opposed to the other way around. That shows you how calculated Dennis Gregory really is. I was going to say, that is, that's the trademark of Dennis Gregory. He makes them play his game. He knows what he's doing in the ring. And oh, like right there. Two and a half, and Gregory weasels his way to the outside. Could sense the tide turning and wanted to do something about it. And Denny taking a breather, formulating a new plan. And where'd Delirious go? That's a good question. And with Delirious, you never really know. Oh. Delir well, he, he snuck out the backside and comes uh, at Gregory uh, from behind, a Dennis Gregory staple, if I ever saw one, and tonight it worked against him. Oh. And first, right in that wooden chair again. That does not feel good, that's been documented. And just moving. Stop that. Greg is trying to get chair. Where's he gonna put it? He's measuring it. Right into the ring. Delirious going the arms up. Then he put the boots to him. Sort of confuse him. Get those arms back down. And then pop the ball. I'll give him no choice but to respect me. Just like all you jerk offs. As wild mouth and boisterous as ever. As a handful of tassels. Delirious. Now has the, the masked man where he wants him. The thing about Denny, as much as he talks the talk, he's able to back it up. He, he blocks the walk while he does it. No doubt about that, and Gregory sends Delirious for the ride. Makes a huge clothesline. Keeping the tempo slow. And notice there's no Daisy A's here at ringside. You gotta believe Delirious told her to, to uh, to uh, stay in the back or maybe stay at home for this one because he's just too much of a liability knowing how Dennis Gregory is. Gregory, I risk with the elbow, but nobody's home. Yeah, a little bit, and vanity costs you all the time. Denny decided he would showboat a little, and now he's paying for it. A series of forearm shots by Delirious. He begins to make the comeback. Up and over here. Drives him down. Face first. Senton as well. Will this be all? New IWC champion for us with history in Ellsworth. No. Two and a half. Gregory eats out. Didn't have the weight evenly distributed over the uh, over both shoulders. A series of martial arts style thrusts by Delirious. That's something you don't see from him too often. And check this out. Gregory sent in. Neck breaker by Gregory. And he is just laying into Delirious. 
laid him down, and now and now giving himself a little bit of time. Watch out! Either do the job or don't. Pay attention, Joe. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Farns, we're delirious uh, on the receiving end of that shot by Gregory. Pay attention, for the love of Pete. Well, either do the job or don't do the well, job. you know You're... what? How about you do the job, pal? Oh, All right, God. I've had enough of your crap, time after time. You know what? You can sit here. You think you can do this job better than me. Take Joe, it, pal. Don't, don't be a fit, oh, Joe. You made fun of this show. You Joe. made fun of this time. You ruined Come the fun on. for me. I'm Joe. going home. Have fun on your own. Joe, don't. See you later, pal. Joe. Don't! Come on, Joe! Don't! Come on! Oh, folks, I apologize. Joe, Joe's sort of a crybaby about some things. I, I pushed him a little too far, I guess. I'm sorry. Joe! Okay, I... Did, um... We... Uh, and we saw this live with the last match, and oh! The Cobra Clutch, and he tried to, he, he arched, he, Joe! Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, folks. Joe's a big sissy. And Denny uh, takes the, take, takes the boot. I'm, I'm not really a play-by-play -play guy. Oh, a big splash from my delirious. This could be it. No, only, only two. Delirious can hardly believe it. I, I, and, and Delirious, the first to his feet. Did, did he really leave? Whip in. And oh, roll, oh, he has the tights. Stacked up and Denny retains the title. One, two, three, holding on to the, the, the ring gear of Delirious. And. Ladies and gentlemen, the world is called Pen Still! He didn't win the title. You can see how upset he is. He knows that Denny cheated, but you know that's part of Denny's game. You expect it when you got to get into the ring with him. This is how he holds on to the title. And if you can't combat something like that, then don't bother stepping into the ring. So if you're watching this later, I'm sorry. I was kidding. I told. I will respect you in the ring. But what I want more of you is for you to have the balls. Bring that little berserk player in my game. Why don't you bring your lady next show? I'm going to do it for you.
It's just me here, folks, and uh, there's a fight going on. I can't see anything. Um, uh, I, Mickey has, uh, has Shima up, and he just dumped him into the tailgate of a truck. Go figure, there's a truck here. And uh, Gory has a hold of uh, Mickey. Seriously, there's no one to replace Joe. distracted over at the timekeeper's area as I, I don't know what we've said so far but obviously this could be the craziest eight-man tag team attraction I've seen in quite some time or at least since last year here at Ellsworth very true we had we had a, a slobber knocker last year oh come on as cliched as that is Farnsworth you know what I'm talking about now check this out for one second this right here this is gonna be the difference maker in this contest You've got Jimmy DeMarco, you've got the Gambino brothers, and of course Vendetta. They have a score to settle in this match here tonight. 
They want retribution. They definitely want to get their vengeance for what happened here in Ellsworth in baseball 2007. And I've got to tell you so far, Farnsworth, from what I've seen, these guys have the number of the tag team champions in Babyface Fire. Well, they also want to uh, want to exact some revenge from what happened at the uh, at the softball match earlier this afternoon, where a brawl erupted between the teams, and it was just a, a donny brawl, for lack of a better term. Uh, an ugly brawl. I mean, in, in a in a charity softball game, nonetheless. But that's what happens when you get the four bad attitudes of DeMarco Vendetta and the Gambino brothers, who have Justin Idol set up. Look at this. Oh, what a display of power right there. Delayed suplex by Vendetta. The cover. And look, two count only. Steven Coulter, kind of tenacious on that count right there, Farnsworth. As you see, continuing with their upper hand are the Gambinos and the Hollywood Balls. Well, they, that was a double team maneuver that Jimmy DeMarco just walked out of to show the strength of Vendetta. Vendetta held him up solo. Look at the, oh man! Sidewalk slam delivered by the largest member of the Gambino family, Marshall Gambino. He eclipses at least, I know Marshall Gambino, and he's at least 310 pounds if he's an ounce inside that ring. And you can tell that Justin Idol, one half of the tag champions, definitely is feeling the effects of that sidewalk slam. Absolutely. That swing out your Anagi just planted him. And that's in addition to the 300 pounds. Marshall is. He also, there was also the momentum of the swing. Oh, and Justin Idol going downstairs on Marshall Gambino, and he gets a kick right at the back of the head. This could be the break that harassment and babyface fire needs. What did Norm say? I, I don't even listen at this point. We got a main event tag team attraction inside that ring. This could be the break that is needed for Justin Idol, who's looking for a tag. Can he get one? The tag is made by Marshall. Mickey's in there. And the No. He missed the tag. Inches short. Justin Idol, the roll through. The tag is made. Back to action, Sal. Here it come. Look out, high cross body. Shima Zion's inside the ring. One half of Babyface Fire. Look out, Tornado DDT. Takes down the largest member of the family. And now, the brute force of the family vendetta inside that ring, slowing down the onslaught by Shima Zion, as now we got several members in there, Farnsworth. And Shima just a bit too excited, unfortunately. Hey, great job picking, picking things up for his team, but he wasn't paying attention. Look at all! You don't turn your back on the family. A spear into the corner. Shima Zion took Vendetta. He had no place to go. And now all members of Babyface Fire and sexual harassment on the top. Farnsworth! Over top of the music. I can't ten punches. believe it. I can't believe the crowd could count, could count to ten. Oh, stop it, Farnsworth. There's a great crowd in here. The hook, the cover. Ow! All members were down. And only a two and a half. All members were down. And now take a look, Farnsworth. We got action spewing on the outside. Inside. Lexor just took a shot from uh, uh, the, the bicycle. Oh! I have never seen that before. A belly to back tossed into Vendetta with Shima Zion. But now Jason Gorey gets the save. And look at this on the outside. It's Eric Ecstasy and Mickey Gambino. And now Jimmy DeMarco. Jimmy DeMarco that. Look out. How? Oh! Oh, QAS. Two. Two count only. And that might be it for Jimmy DeMarco. He might not be able to recover from that maneuver is now through the ropes, goes Jason Gorey, and we got Marshall that's taking Shima Zion. Mickey and Marshall got Zion Get in that there. trough. No. I have no idea what there's a trough out there. We've got Jason Gorey and Jimmy DeMarco. That was a right hand. That'll loosen a couple molars on DeMarco. Yeah. You 
want to talk about a Donnie Brook into the water. They're going around the truck. They're at the, the drop. Mark, Mickey Gambino is soaked. It now looks like, wait a minute, Justin Idol's trying to drown Vendetta. There's activity. There's activity around them. Farnsworth have no idea. There's activity going around. I can't see a thing here. Everyone's pointing at it. Marshall, what the heck? Oh, man. Someone's on the roof. Right above us. I'm going to try to get out here. I can't see a thing, Farnsworth.
two dollars for three. Jimmy, you can't Hey, Norm, he's not going. Why don't you try and take Stop the music. I'll tell you when I'm playing. And when Jimmy's done, Jimmy can't swim. The ringleader goes in next. Let me tell you something. Every time, every time you do an attack on the baby face fire, every time you do that, put them on. You disrespect the promotion. You disrespect these fans. And you know what? You disrespect for yourselves because you train with us, you're supposed to be IWC, and you prove time and time again that you're not. And tonight, every IWC fan is getting retribution. Every IWC fan, wait a minute, where do they be from Rochester, New York? Where do they be from right here in Ellsworth, Pennsylvania? Where do they be from Mount Washington? What? Everybody is going to get a chance to prove to you that IWC is much bigger than anything you can do. I got 50 balls to put Jimmy in the water. I'm going to throw 50 times to put Jimmy in the water. You know what, Vicky? I got to be honest with you. We could do something terrible to you right now. But, I, but listen, listen, listen. I gotta talk to you. He's not going anywhere. No worries. Listen, I'm sitting here with you. Listen, I'm the threat. Look at me. I'm embarrassing. But listen, as soon as Jimmy DeMarco is done, you're going to go into the dunk tank. And every plan that you came up with, every time that you sat there and tried to attack Shima Zion and Jason Gorey, every time, tonight is the night that IWC fans stand up as one and say, screw the Gambinos, screw the Gambinos, screw the Gambinos, let's hear it, screw the Gambinos, screw the Gambinos, screw the Gambinos. Bro, you don't need it. Jason, you don't need it. What she's got coming to her is going to be so much better because every one of these fans has a chance to do it tonight. I'll meet you at the dunk tank. And give it up for Chuck Roberts for getting his lap tuck. Give it up for Babyface Fire, sexual harassment, and give it up for every one of you for coming out tonight. Thank you. I'm sorry for what's about to happen, but it couldn't happen to a nicer girl. Hey, Justin. Justin. Let me get a piece of that. Come here, Norm. Bring him the door. at home, Jimmy DeMarco legit cannot swim, so this should be fun. Hey, Norm, it looks like... Yeah, I did. We talked about it. Everybody will get a chance. $100 a ball. Are we throwing first, then? I'm throwing first. I'm throwing ball. Man?
Come to me. Jimmy, he's Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. Your mother's wet from watching me. <laughs> oh, she's son of a bitch. Oh, okay. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. Set the track. Yeah. 